friends welcome back to my channel my name is Chrissy and this is a little glam a lot of mom I had a vision of child-led geography and cultural studies for the 2021 school year and so in preparation of taking the scenic route this year I have acquired a big amount of geography resources and I'd love to share those with you today I'll kick off this haul with resources for our next unit study, which is National Parks. I realize this is a geography haul, um, but this within this unit study, this can also be science and history and math. The spine of our unit study is going to be this book, uh, The National Parks of the USA. This book is a tour from coast to coast highlighting 21 national parks packed with maps and facts about the animal and plant life of each park. The book goes by regions, and so that just might be the order for our unit study as well. The illustrations are art up on the wall worthy. They really are that stunning. And I also love the size of the book and the pages. In the back of the book, there's a Can You Spot It A to Z wildlife activity prompt and a note on protecting our national parks. And to accompany the book is the National Parks of the USA activity book. Over 15 activities like mazes, spot the difference, crossword puzzles, word searches. There are stickers and even a big pullout map at the end of the book, which we'll be sure to hang up. The illustrations are equally as beautiful as they are in the picture book. Next resource I picked up is the Nat Geo Kids Funny Fill-Ins, My National Parks Adventure. I bought this because I thought this would be fun as an opening activity. Uh, so it's an activity book to create funny stories and the story settings are national parks. And once you finish this booklet, you have yourself silly stories to read. This is a fun resource for working on parts of speech and forming sentences, adjectives, verbs, adverbs, nouns, plural, singular. It'll mostly be Bella, my seven-year-old, working through this, and I know she's going to have fun with it. To help tie in more history, I picked up Theodore Roosevelt by the Who Was series. He was our 26th president, and after becoming president, he used his authority to protect wildlife. He created the U.S. Forest Service and established several national forests, parks, bird preserves, and monuments. I'll be reading a chapter out loud every few days or so, while Bella chooses to color or work in one of the activity books. My youngest wants to be a park ranger when she grows up, so I bought this picture book with her in mind, but all of the littles will enjoy it. I chose this because it's a non-fiction book and educational on all the responsibilities of a park ranger, including some of their duties if they worked at a particular park. And here's a spread on some of the historical figures who contributed to the creation of the National Park Service. So we can use this spread to kick off further history studies on a particular individual. It is no doubt that we love activity books, especially ones from Nat Geo Kids, and this one is the Junior Ranger activity book. This resource gives our unit study a balance of nonfiction illustrations of the parks, uh, and it does a reference to all 59 U.S. state parks. The skill level seems to be uh, like my teens can get some use of it along with my seven-year-old, particularly in the trivia and quizzes. There are also search and find activities, mazes, games, and more funny fill-ins. Coloring is something that we like to do, especially during read-alouds. So I picked up um, a while ago, actually, this Dover coloring book on national parks. You guys know that we love these Dover coloring books uh, and it made it into our top 10 favorite resources. I enjoy the real living style of the illustrations of these books and that there is informative captions describing the spread of each park. A few of the board games that I picked up to go with this unit study and let's begin with camp. Camp is a game where both children and adults can learn fun facts about the outdoors. 
it's designed to grow with the player as well and I'll explain so there are eight game pieces and they're all animals the game starts at level one questions which is primarily the identification of animals the older players or as the players increase their knowledge about the outdoors they grow into the higher level questions so here's an example of a question card there are four levels here one two three and four level one question is what fish is pictured above and then this is my children's favorite part using this decoder or viewfinder to find the answer so you roll a die and as you land on different uh, stops on the board game you either pick up a card um, or you don't for example the white tracks you do not pick up a card uh, and when you land on green tracks you do uh, there is also a landing spot that sends you to the clubhouse to pick up the fun fact so the object of the game is to get right back to the campfire site where you started I also picked up several games from the Masterpieces Junior Ranger line, and I'll start with National Parkopoly Junior. Unlike traditional Monopoly, this one uh, is about a 20 to 30 minutes of playtime, two to four players. Your game pieces are animals again, and as you collect national parks and the animals that live there, you learn facts about them. And you can draw ranger cards to act out fun challenges or trade properties. As I mentioned already, your game pieces are animals and they are cardboard. And your properties and your die is plastic. The National Park animal cards are really nicely illustrated. You have a stack of your junior ranger challenge cards and the money which feels like and looks really similar to traditional Monopoly money. The next game is Grumpy Old Bear which is a take on Old Mate. The illustrations on these are very cartoonish, not my favorite, but it is fun for the littles. The object is to match as many pairs as you can, and whoever is left with the grumpy old bear who does not have a match loses. Simple card games like these are great in that you can modify them to make them easier or more difficult or just a whole nother game. I do that with my toddler Luna and she loves this card game. This last one is a big family favorite and this one is Poop Tracks. The contents in here are a spinner, 39 cards and a guide and every player takes a turn spinning and that will determine if the player draws a player can trade or swipe from another player lose a turn so the object is to match as many of three cards uh, the animal the track and its poop player with the most matches wins the cards that match have the same scenery or setting and the scat card usually has a silhouette of the animal to help make your matches. Uh, but there is a guide included uh, which can be used if necessary. A stack of more activity books, but these are specifically for our geography shelf. So the first one is a Nat Geo Kids sticker activity book on Safari. And this is for our Africa cubby. Again, we love these Nat Geo activity books. Uh, there are over a thousand stickers. There are activities like puzzles, mazes, matching, coloring, and so many animal facts. Also, three more Dover coloring books uh, to add to our growing collection. The Great Barrier Reef for the Australia Cubby. Let's learn about Japan. And this book also has some suggestions for activities like origamis. And besides coloring pages, also mazes and crosswords and spot the difference. United States coloring book, and this seems like there is a page for each state. And this might be perfect to use uh, along in our national parks study as well. This workbook is from the Target dollar spot. It was just a dollar, so I picked it up. And it looks like it's about half a page per state all about china stories songs crafts and games 
Uh, the contents uh, begin with an introduction to China. Then there are historic places, China's uh, geography, China's government, 5,000 years of culture and inventions, homes in China, uh, day in the life in China, family, traditions, and customs, foods, arts, festivals, and holidays, endangered animals and species. There seems to be a lot of educational information in here. The illustrations are definitely digital, but they are nice. And also, I don't know how culturally or politically appropriate or correct this is, but I suppose we will learn along the way. It seems like there are more Asian countries in this series that I'd like to pick up if we do enjoy this. I picked up several reference books to keep on our geography shelf, and we do own several of these little kids' first big book of From Nat Geo Kids. And so this is a new one on the rainforest, new for us. There is an introduction to the rainforest. The rest of the book is categorized by the layers of the rainforest. So the forest floor, the understory, canopy, and emergent layer, which I thought was pretty neat. And of course, this could be also uh, categorized as science. I'm hauling it in this video because I bought it for our geography shelf. Uh, to study more about the world's rainforest. Our geography shelf was in need of a few new picture books. Uh, so this one is Edward the Emu and this is for our Australia cubby. This is a story about an emu that lives in a zoo, uh, but after speaking to a seal, um, he wants a different life and so we haven't read through it yet That's just what I read from the description, but I do know that there is another one of a female emu It seems pretty silly and cute and so we'll see if we enjoy this Me on the map and now we have this read this one plenty times already and my kids enjoy it uh, This is to help the kids understand our place on a map so it begins with a map of the little girl in her room then it zooms out to her house, to her street, to a map of her town, a map of her state in Kansas, her country, the continent, and finally her place on a world map. And the concept is pretty neat. The next one is Listen to the Wind, a true story of Dr. Greg, who stumbled into a Himalayan village, lost and delirious after a failed uh, climb. The villager saved his life and so he vowed to return and build them a school. I do like that there are actual photographs of uh, the people in the story and the village towards the back. And the illustrations in the picture story part of the book are really neat. Uh, it's sort of like collage uh, style and the point of view of the story is of the kids uh, in the village that now attend the school. Wangari's Trees of Peace, another true story. This one is from Africa, and it's based on Wangari Maathai, who is an environmental and political activist in Kenya. I actually have a mini unit study, um, a history unit study, to go with this, and I will share more on that soon. These next two books are my favorite out of this haul, and these are also for our African cubbies. And it is um, Moha means one, a Swahili counting book, and Jambo means hello, a Swahili alphabet book. And you guys, the illustrations in these books just take my breath away. And I know my entire family is going to enjoy these so much. The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind, another true and inspirational story, which is also now a movie. And I just really want to uh, show my kids and teach my kids and fill their minds and hearts and thoughts with all the good that there is in the world. So this is a story about persevering against odds. A 14-year-old uh, boy uh, who builds a windmill out of scraps to provide electricity to his village. All right, guys, we're in the final stretch here of resources, and these are just random fun resources for our geography shelf. This is a Rose Art Artist Rainforest poster. 
Bella picked this out of the clearance aisle at Michael's. Uh, I've mentioned previously that coloring is one of my favorite relaxing pastimes to do with my littles. It's easy, we talk, we listen to music, and we just color. I picked up a set of Wild Republic Nature Tube, and this is for Australia, Australian animals. And we do normally buy the Safari LTD tube sets. We own several of them and we love them, but I had been wanting to give Wild Republic brand a try. And so I will say that these uh, figures are bigger uh, in size comparable to uh, the Safari LTD brand. However, the Safari LTD selection is bigger um, and they have more specific topics than the Wild Republic last resource I have to share with you is this board game. It's called Kadu, the big game. This is African Savannah, a uh, wildlife safari adventure board game. Uh, this is made in India, um, so I thought it would be interesting to try out. Um, it says two to four players in about 45 minutes playtime. So I will start off out by saying that the board is thin it's a thin piece of cardboard so I don't know how durable this will be how long it'll last but it is double-sided um, so you can choose the setting of a woodland habitat or an African alpine habitat your game pieces are safari jeeps or cars and then my next thought was that the wheels actually don't turn and if they would that would be nice uh, you do get a big nice size die and 100 animal cards the animal setting cards which have a short description or animal fact um, some are rare animal sightings and i will say that the illustrations are lovely and then there are also action cards such as turn around and reverse and you have your uh, landing uh, slots or spaces on the board game with ac actions as well uh, like roll again or pick a card so the game is four players going on a safari throughout the savannah it's a point based game so you collect higher points as you uh, have rare animal sightings there are elements of safari experiences like alarm calls and clues which makes it more exciting and fun so from what i read i believe this is a new um, reprint or like a new version of the board game and i did purchase it on amazon but going back now to look for it i only see the older version available so i do really apologize about sharing something that is momentarily unavailable but check back on amazon you know things there change so frequently i hope you enjoyed today's haul and if you did please be sure to give me a thumbs up it helps out my channel a lot i am very excited to share more on how we will implement these resources this school year so if you're looking forward to that please consider subscribing if you haven't already